delivery of our new 640i clean title. We'll show you guys more in depth of the car in a little bit, but let's just get this thing unloaded. And this is probably the first talking clip um, of the, the brand new 640i that we have on this channel. First off, thank you to Arlon for coming with me, bro, helping me get this thing. Um, so at this point, guys, we have the car here. Uh, we have the money over there. We haven't even paid for it. We just got it delivered. It is a clean title 640i with 78,000 miles. And this is the cheapest clean title one on the market. I can guarantee it because of a major, major, major issue. And that's why we have Carly real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and see what's going on, run the codes, and just see whether or not it is the worst comes to worst. Because if it is, we are, we are ready for it. We got it for a deal to basically be able to afford the worst comes to worst. But wouldn't it be awesome if it's something minor? So <laughs> getting into the interior, guys, this thing is immaculate. Very good condition. Uh, we'll show you guys all the upgrades and stuff like that once the owner actually comes. He's gonna be coming down here, uh, probably saying, you know, what's up to you guys. He's, a, he's also a supporter. This is a subscriber's car. So shout out to him for getting me this good deal. But yeah, hopping into the interior real quick. Uh, let's just plug in the scanner. Put the car in accessory. Look at this big screen, guys. This thing is massive and it's touch screen. This is something you put in aftermarket for 500 bucks. I think it looks pretty awesome. I'm not a huge fan of aftermarket things, but this thing looks pretty dope. 78,000 miles and uh, there's, there, there's one little problem. So if I go ahead, put my foot on the brake and turn it on, nothing, nothing nothing whatsoever you do hear the like the engine like do one click but that's about it so uh let's go ahead and run the codes and see what's going on with that all right guys so we are running the codes real quick again it could be absolute worst comes to worst which we we're expecting but uh it could also be something minor it threw a drive chair malfunction um before the issue started coming up so uh yeah let's go ahead and see what that drive train malfunction code is exactly as, as we're waiting for the codes to load up we Erlan <laughs> noticed that this car has massaging seats what car do you guys know actually has massaging massaging seats it also has cooling seats heated seats i mean this thing's i mean does it have heated steering that would also be kind of crazy no it doesn't but i mean man guys this thing is pretty well specked out i'm pretty sure it has a backup camera as well uh pdc sensors right over here two keys to this car again clean title um man we're just waiting for this thing to load up i'm just very curious to what the issue is with this car that is a bunch of codes my lord all right guys so the two engine codes are flex ray message torque uh what's it called torque drivetrain stabilization uh vehicle electrical system okay that's the first thing which is interesting uh power management battery uh threshold Okay, well that's that's pretty much it for engine. That's I feel like there's much more than that. Why is there airbag faults? You know what, guys? This honestly could be throwing a million faults because the battery was low. I'm gonna go ahead and just clear everything and give it a few more cranks to see what codes actually come back. All right, guys. So we just cleared the codes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give it another crank. Honestly, I'm no. I mean, I really doubt it's gonna do anything. But we did clear the codes. There was a million codes. First crank. Nope. It's like literally just like it's not even like cranking. I mean, guys, hear it right now. Oh, like it's turning a little bit more now with that power box there. Um, again, I, I'm just kind of having a little bit of hopes. Uh, he took it to a shop. They diagnosed pretty much a bad engine. Um, so it, worst comes to worst, it is a bad engine. We are anticipating that. But the reason I also think it could be something else is the previous owner told me he was just driving this thing and then he gets a random drivetrain malfunction. He was driving normally, random drive drivetrain malfunction and the car just completely shuts off. So um, ever since that day, no more power that goes to the car. Uh, so it doesn't really make much sense to me. I feel like if it blows, it would at at least make some kind of sound some popping something like that he said there was no weird sounds again i'm just kind of going based off of what uh he told me there's no reason for him to lie um so i guess we're gonna keep diagnosing it more and more uh but not for today's video for now um you should be here any minute and i just want to go ahead and pay him for the car so we can say this baby's ours right, so david just got here we just finished a transaction and everything he's got the money i've got the keys bro how you feeling right now dude dude i'm sad as hell <laughs> dude i was supposed to keep this car i love this car but I know, but I things happen in life, right, bro? Dude, yeah. It's just... The thing is, uh, we both of us don't really know what's going on with this. I ran the codes. The same thing to do with like the starter itself, or it could be some kind of electrical issue, or it could be the crank. 
uh, messing up where it's seizing the motor to where the start the starter's not even turning over. So you don't want to dump money into it Dude. because if you dump money into it, you don't you just I'm want, already you might just bro. keep dumping, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel it, I feel it. So um, I mean, you're gonna see it on this channel, bro. Hopefully yeah. it works out. Yes, sir. Hopefully it looks pretty good. I, I wouldn't I, want to go into anyone else, bro. For <laughs> sure. But I mean, uh, just so they they know what's going on. Uh, what did you do to this car exactly? Like it Dude. looks pretty stock from the outside. I but bought it stock from an old lady and literally I turned it into like a 400 wheel horsepower monster. Like I did FBO, all the supporting mods, Pure Stage 2. Pure Stage 2, bro, that's crazy. I'm running crazy. a super conservative 91 tune, but uh, hey, if you get it up and running, there's <laughs> E30 maps ready and... Vimo 3, right? Yeah, I Vimo ran Vimo and I loved it. So, and also in terms of the interior, you, it looks like you upgraded the screen. Um, did you do anything else cosmetically? Uh, or that's no. probably the only cosmetic that's modification. Literally, it's just the screen and then uh, I got some deflectors, like deflectors <laughs> in front. Oh, okay, those things? Okay, yeah. and then in terms of the exhaust, is that stock? No, sir. So I had the catalyst downpipes and then the mufflers off of the M6, valves pinned open. It sounds really mean, but when there's cops around, it's uh, easy on the There's gas. no turning it off, right? That's it? No, no, no. But it's, trust me, when you're not on the gas, it's uh, super it's, civilized. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's it's good. It's not crazy. I noticed also, this isn't factory, right? You need a quad tip? Oh, yeah. That, so the mufflers off the, M, the, with the M6, uh, it's quad tip. So. Oh, wait. So this is a straight muffler from an M6? Yeah. Straight up. Oh, dude, that's baller. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sick. You might have to actually throw on an M6 bumper or something in that case, because that's yeah. gonna be perfect fitment, right? Yeah, if you get a quad uh, tip diffuser, it'll look sick. Bro, yeah. that is gonna be sick. Okay, heck yeah. I mean, bro, like I said, um, hopefully we'll, we'll, you'll see it on the channel. Um, I appreciate the opportunity, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Uh, first off, actually, just for also the peace of mind, you, you're okay with being on camera, right? Dude, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So you guys know I'm not like pure pressure to be on camera or anything like that. He's a super cool guy, and uh, I mean now we have the opportunity to build a car that you guys have been telling me to build for the longest time. They've been wanting me to do a six years for the longest time. Of course, and, uh, I mean, now it's here, bro. It's crazy. I mean, what are you gonna do? I mean, this, this I is still like the best looking F series BMW. It, it really, I honestly, I bro, it. I agree with you. It, it looks really good. Honestly, bro, in pictures, I'm not a huge fan, but in person, this thing's pretty nice. Dude, yeah. That's yeah. Why I it looks really good, dude. Yeah. So. All right, guys, so I just finished up with David, and right after I finished up with David, I went inside, I did a little bit of research of what the issues can possibly be, but then also, you know, I'm always on my phone looking up good deals, and I found a really good deal in basically San Francisco, a two-hour drive in the middle of the night, and he told me he was gonna be traveling the next day. So I decided, you know what, since it's such a good deal, and I've always wanted an X5, and especially an E70 X5, there's something about it that I love so, so, so much, I decided uh, to take a trip there in the middle of the night. Guys, it is 8.05 p.m. We just found ourselves an X5. Am I impulsively buying cars all of a sudden? Maybe, but is this gonna be a sick build? Yes, for $2,500, we just found ourselves an X5's 3.0 N52. That is the most reliable E70 um, X5 out there. If you get the, 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 the tw twin turbo one, those have so many issues. Literally the most frowned upon, hated one all over the forums, just because of how many issues they are. Even my close friend actually has one that's currently like out of business, out of commission, you can't even drive it. Um, the V8s obviously have a lot of issues as well, including valve stems and things like that. The N52 with the all-wheel drive system is just bulletproof on that car, um, and it, I think we can make it look absolutely insane. So for $2,500, guys, that is four or $5,000 below market. Um, it will need a motor. Uh, I, I'm just buying cars that need motors right now because honestly, we're gonna full send it, boys. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm gonna wait for my boy Roland to come by, and we're gonna go check out this beast. <laughs> So after checking out the car and everything, everything looked really, really, really good. We're super excited to cop it. So we're asking him for the title so we can give him the money. And all of a sudden he gives us a Florida title with California plates, which that's not valid in California. And uh, we started talking to him, things just don't seem as, you know, as it's supposed to be. Um, so unfortunately we just ended up having to dip because I don't think I'll be able to register the car. Um, so that was a super unfortunate thing, but we got to check it out. It was super sick and I definitely want to get an E70 on this channel, <laughs> but that was one long 
long drive to check out an E70. Two hours there, two hours back. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to the 640. And welcome back to day two, guys. Your boys with this in and out outfit. And uh, man, why are there so many cars right now, bro? No this is such a busy road. One of those, one of the regrets of uh, getting this house. But other than that, pretty blessed, pretty blessed. Anyways, um, I got my boy Alon. He's been uh, hanging out literally every single day. You might as well live here, bro. I got an extra room. Well, you know, might as well at this point. Uh, <laughs> he's here today with me to go ahead and try to knock out uh, the little things with this car that's causing this thing possibly not to crank over. It does not even crank. We're assuming because of the previous owner, what he stated um, is that it had a drive trim off function and completely turned off while he was driving. There's a chance the engine ended up seizing up because, it, I mean, like you guys know from the last video, I think I mentioned it has pure stage two uh, turbos. It has full bolt-on uh, boot mode, stage two map, like everything on this thing. So long story short, this thing could have blown a motor, but it also could be something electrical because as you guys know with the six series and seven series and all those like upper series, um, just one electrical issue guys would cause so much problems in your BMW. So we're gonna go ahead and just knock out the little things, make sure it's not the little things, um, test out the starter, test out the alternator, test out, uh, you know, try to turn the motor, um, check the, all the battery cables, stuff like that. And uh, you know, run the codes, use BMW software. <laughs> and let's see today guys, if we can get this thing at least cranked, that'll be pretty awesome. So right now guys, we did leave a trickle charger on it last night. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on jump mode real quick and we're gonna go ahead and put the jumper pack on the front of the hood we're gonna go ahead and give his first crank with enough juice hopefully and what do you think bro what do you think let's start let's start it up please god at least something a little bit better would be nice oh that's that's definitely a lot better than last time bro that was at least a, a turnover. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um, it says ignition switched on right now. I'm not actually getting any battery codes right now. Ignition, do not turn off engine. Well, it's saying the engine's on. Oh, increase battery discharge. So we still? Bro, there's something probably wrong with the electrical system. I'm telling you. Well, I mean, right now it seems like the battery's still dead. It probably didn't charge it in there. So the battery oh, we should throw another battery, bro. Should we? Because another sometimes I'm going to tell you the alternator could have died. Oh, while yeah. driving? And but would that turn it, off the car, though? Yeah, because it kills your battery. Ah. And then, and then, so your alternators are provo pr providing 12 volts, your battery dies, so the car doesn't have any power, so it shuts off. But I'm thinking if we put in a good battery, it would at least turn over. Yeah. It won't last long, but it should turn over. Yeah, if we put a battery and it turns over, I think it just means it needs some electrical work, not. Let's put a new battery, guys. Let's get the let's get the battery on my 328. <laughs> Alright guys, so we finally got the battery out of the 640i. Shout out to Roland for that. So we got that thing pulled out. In terms of this car now, this one has a good battery inside of it. Uh, before we actually get into actually, you know, removing the battery, let me show you guys this new toolkit that ended up picking out. This bad boy right here by Wera right here. Um, I got this through Keys Motorsports. If you guys want to check it out, link's going to be down below. I also have my code if you guys want to use this. But honestly guys, this thing's super sick. I have a Velcro right over here. <laughs> but look at this thing. It looks so good. So it's stuck right over here. As soon as you open the trunk, you got a nice toolkit. You can go ahead and open this well it's all velcroed in here uh, but if you want to remove it take it anywhere but i mean by the bang this thing feels such high quality the reason i actually love this toolkit is because it has all the bare necessities that you would need on working on a bmw it has all your little bits in here that you'd use for bmws it even has just your standard phillips head stuff like that what's also super nice about this kit is that it doesn't get messy literally if i pick this up the sockets are not going to come out it's not going to spill all over the place to get these sockets out you have to literally turn them pull it out super easily put it back in there turn it that's how it locks super nice system i love it. the next thing is obviously you have all your extensions and stuff like that and you also have this little piece right here that allows you to put the bits inside of it and use it within your ratchet and the cool thing about this ratchet guys because this kit like literally has so many awesome things if you pull out this ratchet and you grab one of these sockets first off this thing feels really good to the hand it has a good weight to it pull out this socket put it on here this is now clockwise and the only way you can pull this socket out is by pressing this and the only way for it to go counterclockwise um because sometimes, sometimes when you're working in a tight space something hits the back of it and all of a sudden now it's counterclockwise on this ratchet that would never happen even as the orientation on this side it is currently clockwise if you click this turn it over push this inwards now we are going counterclockwise i love this ratchet mainly because you can never actually mess up when working on cars super nice to use and again the quality is super nice very compact and it has like pretty much all the little things you would need when working on bmws and also not to mention guys it's gonna sit right here, just chilling like a villain. Oh, I didn't even put that in all the way, but 
you, get, you guys get the point. <laughs> it's super sick. Without further ado, let's go ahead and pull out the battery in this car and slap, bro, imagine if it's just the battery, dude. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to feel. I wouldn't know how to feel either. I, I mean, I would be crazy happy, but at the same time, the guy that sold it to me is one of you guys, a follower, and he would be crazy, like, devastated. Like, that would suck because the, the shop he took it to, um, he trusted him. Obviously, when you take your car to a shop, you trust the, the shop to, you know, give you a good proper diagnostic. Yeah. And if it's just a battery, bro, like, that's that's like the that's like the starting point, yeah. you know? So, um, it's the definition of a bad shop. Let, oh, I'm not going to lie. If, if it's the battery. If, if it's, it's the, the battery. battery. I mean, yeah, literally. If it's, a, if, it's, if it's a starter, you know, if it's an alternate or something like that, you would have to go more into the diagnostics and you would have to ask the customer for something like that um which he did tell the customer about that he did tell the guy that bought the car off about that but if it's a battery i'm telling you guys i would be literally shocked but let's let's go ahead and try it man i hate this bracket piece i don't even think i'm gonna put it back i hate this thing yeah, it stops it from moving a lot oh it actually says to keep it in there yeah all right we'll keep it in there if the pro says keep it in there guys we'll keep it in there you know what i'm saying All right, guys, so we have the battery in there. Is the jumper still good? I think the jumper's still good. No, yeah, it's off right now, but... Oh, okay. It's gonna turn it on. I mean, we have... Yeah, I mean, right now, it's even saying the battery's good. Uh, we have more than enough juice at this point, so if this doesn't crank over, clearly not the battery issue, because it's a perfectly good battery from BMW and a jumper. So, um, moment of truth, guys. But if it cranks, it's a good sign, because we bought this thing and the engine was seized. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bro, if it cranks... Oh, man, dude. All right, guys, moment of truth right here. First startup. <laughs> Ah, oh, nah. Nah. <laughs> it sees, bro. It's getting closer, but... Could it be a dying starter? Oh, stop. Stop. Bro. Stop. Get out, dude. Oh. Bro, do you have some you have water? Uh, no, 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 I don't think it's on fire. I think the, I think the starter merge just burned a little bit. <laughs> you don't need water. You don't need water. You don't need, <laughs> you don't need water, water, bro. Are you sure? I'm sure, I'm sure. You probably overheated the starter and either the insulation on the starter wiring started burning or the starter motor. So it's not the starter. <laughs> well, now it's the starter. Well, now we got a starter, bad starter, yeah, but. Let's do it one more time, real quick. <laughs> if it catches on fire it won't, it won't usually when they catch fire because of oil they keep burning that's when you need to be careful because the oil just burns harder and harder but if this is electrical okay yeah let go one more time <laughs> oh, you might as well <laughs> okay okay guys my heart sunk <laughs> that was so much smoke there's still a little bit dude uh, no, that was a lot of smoke Bro. I, I probably shouldn't have been so nonchalant but <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of smoke. <laughs> Imagine the whole car burns down, bro. Bro, I'm be so sad. We were like looking at it like, oh, we probably we probably got such a good deal, and all of a sudden we're about no, to have a dude. burnt fire damaged car. All right, guys. So that is. That is, we're done with the test in terms of uh, testing out the power and stuff like that. That's that. I mean, we put more than enough juice. Engine does not want to turn over. And honestly, bro, it does sound more of a mechanical than an electrical issue at this point. Yeah. Right. Because like, if it has full power, I would feel like it would keep cranky. It just won't start. Facts, so facts. this, this, I mean, like, like, Alon said, he does want to go ahead and you, you sure you want to turn over the, uh, try to turn it manually. Yeah. You just put a socket and a wrench on the crank and spin that. Okay. And you then think we'll it's see. Easy accessible or because I don't. Because if, if the starter can't spin the engine, we're not gonna be able to spin the engine. Does that facts, make sense? Facts, facts. So we'll know quick. Okay. But if we can spin the engine perfectly fine, then we know maybe it's something with voltage to the starter or the starter. And that's a good thing. Like uh, that's the thing about Erlon. He knows a lot more than I do. I wouldn't really know how to do all these other steps. For me, I'll test out the battery thing. If that doesn't work, um, you know, I probably replace spark plugs ignition coils yeah <laughs> you know but that's what everyone else would normally do but yeah like what he said we're gonna try to crank the engine manually hoping something's gonna happen if not i mean but we expected a new engine you know like end of the day yeah, i'm not gonna yeah, be too yeah. upset about it that's how we bought yeah it. so i don't know if you guys know i don't know if i told you guys early in the video we did pick this up for twelve thousand dollars twelve thousand dollars clean title pure stage two turbos um full bolt-on uh that's pretty crazy the, the exhaust is pretty much full straight piped as well uh so yeah pretty crazy clean title seventy eight thousand miles two keys uh, these go for roughly about twenty two to twenty three thousand dollars stock So for me when we get a new engine back in here rebuilt the engine and everything I'm gonna put on the stock turbos to see if everything is you know Perfect, um, and then possibly you put on this pure stage two tur turbos or not I honestly don't know if I'm gonna do that just because like guys with seventy eight thousand miles the pure stage twos blew this motor so as n 50 as, as reliable as n55s I like to think are 
I don't know, bro. I don't think with, with, with pure stage twos, they're that reliable. They're really reliable. They just cannot handle power. Yeah, yeah. And everybody knows that. Yeah. So bro, it's I like can it, still smell it, bro. <laughs> it stinks. Bro, that's crazy. So yeah, guys, without further ado, let's just, uh, let's go ahead and just try to turn this thing manually. Dinner and dining, whatever, to whatever it is, but there are dinner and dining, uh, what's it called? The injectors in there, um, no, actually not, I mean, uh, ignition coils. Okay. And then uh, we have an aftermarket charge pipe. I believe he said it, aftermarket intercooler as well. That's um, what I was wondering, is it an aftermarket intercooler? Yeah, yeah, inlets and outlets, everything. Is that a stock inlet? This is stock, yeah. It's like super shiny. I've never actually seen an inlet that's, Dude, is that an inlet or what is that? This is a, uh, yeah, inlet. Yeah, inlet, yeah, that's crazy. It's Super close. shiny. <laughs> when we saw that smoke, guys, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I, I thought I thought we just lost everything on this car. All right, guys, so our alarm pretty much tripped everything on this engine bay to get it to the point to where we can actually try turning this engine manually, bro. Uh, so this is our first time. We're gonna do it off camera, just kind of like, you know, just <laughs> just see if it's actually good. But you know what? We're gonna do it on camera, give you guys our official reaction if this thing is toast or not. So yeah, bro, I mean, moment of truth, dude. You ready? Yes, sir. Oh, God damn. That's a little hard, huh? That's a little hard. It's it, spinning, though. It is spinning. That is really hard though. I don't think it's supposed to be that hard. I don't know if it's supposed to be that hard either. Yeah, cause uh, what's it called? I remember I just did it recently on the N52. It was hard, but not that hard. But it's spinning, right? That's kind of odd. As this this car is so much easier to get to. But yeah, look how easy that is. You're not even giving that much force, are you? No, it's getting hard at the end there, but. Oh, it's should, getting harder. It should go right over top the center, and then it should spin. It easy. should get a little bit easier now, right? Yeah. See. Yeah, that's that's a lot easier. Mine is just. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i mean where we at now bro <laughs> so at this point guys i'm gonna hit up bma european <laughs> and get myself a brand new n55 and i say brand new this car has 78,000 miles they're getting into n55 with 30,000 miles so i'm gonna try to cop that one if not i'm gonna try to get around 80,000 70,000 miles obviously it's kind of messed up to throw something with a lot higher mileage uh so we're gonna try to aim for around the similar mileage range uh, but i mean at this point guys Ah, man, okay, well, we're gonna have to put this off to the side for a little bit just because, you know, our goal is to get the super out. We are still working on E91. This one, I was thinking if it was something simple, we'll knock out today. If it's something major, you know, we're gonna have to spend a little more time on this. So, and plus we have to get the motor. So I, I, I guess we'll keep you guys posted. And we have made it to the end of the video, guys. So uh, yeah, the 640i definitely looks like it has a bad motor. It definitely looks seized, but it is turning a little bit, but I mean, I'm not gonna keep putting hope into it. I mean, literally it burned the starter, putting full juice into that thing. I think we tried putting our absolute might, strength and everything, trying to turn that thing over manually did not work. So uh, yeah, we kind of expected this. Um, getting the car $10,000 cheaper than market value, that is to be expected. If we can get a motor, for like four thousand dollars get that swap squared away i think that'll be a really 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 good cop the goal is obviously to get a motor for four thousand dollars we go for like six to seven thousand dollars regardless it's still a good deal but, but i'm trying to get one around four thousand dollars that'd be like the ideal number so i'll keep you guys posted on what's going to be happening with the 640i for now it's just going to be chilling there um i'm going to be taking the battery down to autozone because it is an autozone battery that was in the car i'm going to try to see if i can get that replaced because it is shot in terms of the x5 that you guys saw me trying to go out and get um i don't know if that's going to happen anymore but if we do find another e 70 x5 i really 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 want to get one and modify it make it m sport and just put like a crazy kit on there i don't know why but the e70 x5 is like right now i'm really 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 digging it and i got this 640i because again like i want to try a new platform try new things maybe even modify this we'll see how it goes but regardless you guys know the goal is is to get that r8 by the end of 2022 and do whatever it takes to enjoy the process build some sick cars and get to that point by the end of this year as far as the super i hit up v tuned and uh some good news is possibly possibly um don't hold them to it but possibly we might be collaborating in the near future to actually get that quarter panel welded ourselves and get it prepped for paint and everything on this channel which would be super sick i would love to do a collaboration actually learn the skills and how to do that stuff properly so from here on out i'll be able to do that kind of stuff on my own the equipment alone to do that job is gonna be like two to three grand it's definitely worth it because we're gonna be doing rebuilds for as long as i can even think so without further ado i love y'all so much remember to stay humble i'll see y'all in the next one peace out